I done caught you red-handed. You're not gonna ruin another holiday season. Two questions. Who are you, and who do you think I am? Well, I'm Santa Gus, and you're the Grinch. Do I look like the Grinch? Oh, well, maybe. I don't care who either of you are. I'm about to turn both of you into ghosts of Christmas past, mother f Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. <laughs> That's my line. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and you would think the week before the holidays that toy companies would slack off a little bit. They just keep pumping out the reveals and the pre-orders. Here's what I decree. Here's what I demand. You take next week off. Don't do anything. I don't want to see any toy news next week. Wait, what will I do? Does that mean I'd... Hover around Facebook and Twitter, reading about how much things suck? Or maybe go outside? Oh, okay, toy companies, forget what I just said. Go ahead, hit us, hot and heavy. We need more plastic. First up, NECA, who started off the week with some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle news, which I guess now that I think about it, isn't really that odd. They announced that they would be offering up the deluxe foot soldier on the NECA store. Comparing to the solicitation pictures that were released way back in March for the original release, it looks like the same pack out. In fact, it uses the same picture. But the big reveal was the Mouser multi-pack. Six Mousers, interchangeable battle damage parts, Shredder spy bot, VHS tape, pizza slice, rats, and cheese wedge. It's just a cool accessory set that also works like an army builder pack. Because of that, well, the foot soldier too is a troop builder. Thankfully, they put these up with no limit, and then no matter how many you order, the shipping charge does not go up. <laughs> you pay a flat rate. But that's not all. NECA also posted some digital downloads, giving us a sneak peek at what's coming in the TMNT future. Sticking with the cartoon, here's the Neutrinos and Usagi Yojimbo. I know we saw the raw sculpt for Usagi a few months ago. <laughs> Has it been? God, this year's either flown by or dragged all to hell. But painted piece means progress. That means it's one step closer to seeing release. We also saw Toka and Razar silhouettes a few months back. Here they are in full color along with a Crooked Ninja Turtle Gangoon and a Rock Soldier Infantryman. And then for the movie top figures or live action offshoots or their kind of crossover lines, they showed the secret of the ooze turtles. There are some tweaks here and there, but the biggest differences are the heads. And, uh, well, I'm not the biggest fan of Secret of the Ooze, especially what they've done to my boy Donnie. Y you see that it's weird, right? You agree? Way down at the bottom, we get silhouettes of the Universal Monsters X Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Michelangelo as the mummy, and confirmation that it is April O'Neil as the Bride of Frankenstein. Very slow tease rollout on these, but I'm okay with that. It just builds anticipation. Todd's also been his usual busy self, showing us yet more DC multiverse figures. Endless water, endless water, endless water. Endless winter Aquaman has all of my favorite design elements when it comes to Arthur, but man, and I hate to keep harping on it, the side eye, it's, it's cool as an alternate head option type situation in case you want something like that, but man, it kills a lot of, like, ACBA, a lot of diorama. What if you want him fighting someone to the left side, and he's just, what do you mean something's happening to my left? Martian Manhunter doesn't have that problem, though. He ain't got pupils, or eye detail. He may have students, who knows? And I like the overall look here. Yes, it's a modern type costume, but just those yellow discs and the green body, well, I mean, it's not like you're gonna mistake this for somebody else, it's Martian Manhunter. With Solar Superman, I am such a sucker for costumes like this, you know that, just black and silver or black and white, it, it's eye-catching. But his head does seem small, smaller than usual. That, multiverse has its own aesthetic, where it's kind of big bulky bodies, some long limbs, but this is really accentuated because of the clean lines of the costume, it's just, body, head. And it's the same with Zod. It's further accentuated because of this big bulky upper body armor. But it's still a good look and like I said, it fits in with the rest of Multiverse. So <laughs> if you don't like it, you don't like it. But if you do, here's more characters that aren't Batman. Let's, let's savor the victories here. $20 a piece due out spring of 2022. Sticking with DC and McFarlane down on the sneaky, Todd is wishing the DC Essentials line back into life with the canceled, deceased Harley, Superman, 
who else is on this list? Supergirl and Flash. And why wouldn't it be a line of zombies to resurrect a series back from the dead? Plus the whole concept seems right up McFarlane's alley, right? The promo pictures for the new solicitations are actually the pictures from the original solicitations from years ago. So I don't know how this is working behind the scenes. I haven't read a lot of press releases when it comes to that. I just want to see plastic. So in my brain, I have to wonder, are they going to use the original tooling, the original molds, the original factories? Is it going to move to McFarland facilities? Are they going to do any tweaking to the sculpts or the tolerances in the articulation? Because <sighs> admittedly, I only have, do I only have one Essentials figure? It's a Batman and I hate it. There's just an awkwardness to it with some random floppy joints. Will they fix all that? Or are they saying this is going to be exactly like the original Essentials line in feel, in look, in price. $30 price tag, even though McFarlane prides himself on keeping the prices down on seven inch action figures. So I can only guess these are gonna be indistinguishable from DC collectibles other than a McFarlane logo here and there on the package. I'm waiting, I'm seeing. Hmm. Then Mezco hit us out of the blue with a 112th Collective Alien Xenomorph Concept Edition. Or remember the 112th Collective Alien that was solicited back in July? This is the exact same thing, except in a slightly translucent milk color. And that's not a bad thing at all. It's a common practice in the industry. Reuse those molds, recoup some money, take that money, put it into new tooling, give us new stuff. And it looks awesome in all its alienness and its six-fingered hands. I guess I'm still harping on that. All this nightmare fuel and it's the extra thumb that gets me. The thing here that gives me pause is the seamless body. I, I hate to bring it up, but we're pushing two years since the original pre-order for the Keaton Batman, who also uses a seamless body. It gets my brain a rambling on why those delays have taken so long. Is it because of the seamless body? Is it gonna be the same for the Alien? Because the Alien, the regular edition, isn't set to come out until early 2022. This is set to come out after. Are we going to see delays with that? Or does it go back to the moving eyes on that Batman? Could that be the problem? And there's no problem with the seamless body and this will come out on time? <laughs> well, it's Mezco. There's usually a push, no matter what kind of body it uses. I don't know. That's just my thought process. Just bleh, laying it out for you. If you like the thing, go pre-order it. It's a hundred bucks. Speaking of reuse, the Sentinel Fighting Armor Black Panther went up for pre-order this week and it is exactly what you expect from this line. I mean, we had already seen this at a show, so we knew exactly what to expect, but the whole concept of this line is to take the Iron Man armor that was the earliest release in this series, tweak it up for each individual character. The biggest changes are usually the chest piece, and of course the head, maybe some gauntlet here and there, and then the color scheme, which I think is the best thing about this figure. The sleek black does a lot to hide the fact that it is just an Iron Man armor with Black Panther elements. But that does make me want a stealth Iron Man in this line because the body's good. It's nice, it's mobile, it's a good sculpt. The silver accents pop on top of that black and don't think I forgot about you, little hints of purple. You are appropriately awesome or awesomely appropriate. <laughs> however you want to word it. But you know what they forgot to include in this set of promotional material? The 80s prom picture. That's my favorite thing when these go up for pre-order. So I had to do it myself. I spent eight minutes on this thing. Does it show? Forever young, I wanna be. $100 should drop in July. Little update for the Hasbro Victory Royale with you. Series Foundation. Earlier in the week, I got an email saying they had sweetened up my pre-order a bit. At first I thought, ooh, sweet. They are adding in the Dwayne The Rock Johnson head that Foundation was revealed to have recently. Or maybe a gun or a weapon of some kind since this figure comes with trigger fingers, but no shooty shooties. But the sweetness is actually a stand and an extra set of fist hands. That and it going up for pre-order in case you missed it the first time around. That's all fine and dandy, but a couple of things. The way they worded the email to say, we'll now include his cape back bling. Okay, whoa, <laughs> don't make it sound like that because the back bling was included back in the original solicitation. Alternate fisted hands, the foundational umbrella glider. Again, the glider was included in the original pre-order. So I get that it may be a wording thing. It's hastily, hey, here's some cool stuff. Now comes with this. But that should have been double checked before it went out because I thought, wait, is he getting all this new stuff? Nope, he's just getting the two things. And then they add the glider display stand. Okay, that is followed by 
completely free of charge to you. Cool, because I already had it pre-ordered. If they had added that stuff and then jacked the price up, cancel because that's not what I pre-ordered. Then I click the link and for the new pre-orders, they have added $5 to the price. It went from my $40 price to 45, <laughs> unless you're my kid who gives me shit about that. My $39.99 original price to $44.99. Hmm. I'm interested to see if a Mattel WWE Rockhead would fit this body. We won't know until April though. On that front, the rock likeness is probably a separate license. That's according to a, a short discussion I had with Jazzwares whenever I asked them about putting John Wick or some of the DC characters in their Fortnite line. They said that was more legal hurdles, but this is Hasbro. They got some money behind them. Would they spend the extra money to go get stuff like that? Or are they happy just doing straight up Fortnite characters? Again, <laughs> I didn't expect to even see this line until January 1st and there's already figures on the shelf. So. We will see what happens next year. Ooh, some Hasbro Star Wars Black Series news in this week's Bring Home the Bounty announcements. I mean, it's another GameStop Gaming Greats exclusive, but it's a kick-ass looking clone variant. And I'm there, I'm ready. Here's the Battlefront 2 Umbra Operative Art Trooper. How awesome would this have been at Halloween with the purples and the, purples? Orange and the blacks, it's one of those days. Doesn't matter, I still want it. It's a clone, it's an interesting design and color scheme, it'll pop in the sea of white troopers that I have on my shelf. $27? <sighs> we get it. It's a GameStop exclusive. You don't have to keep twisting the knife. Uh, should release in April. Jazzwares announced their AEW Unmatched Series 3 back in May. They showed digital renders in September. This week we get the actual prototypes and as a toy collector, I have to say that this is just so much more satisfying. I mean, it's nice to know who's coming and then seeing the basic sculpt, but this gives us an idea of what we're actually gonna have in hand when it comes out. And yeah, it's a Dark Order wave. <laughs> that makes me even happier. They started with Evil Uno and Stu Grayson and both look amazing. Granted, Uno has a mask, but it's the build that's important when it comes to wrestlers too. And this overlay, oh, it, it just works. Then there's John Silver and Anna. Anna? Silver looks a little bit off and it's not just because he seems to have a beauty filter on his face where it softens everything up. It's because he's not grinning. He's not smiling. And when I picture John Silver, that's how I picture him. I'm also wondering if the height will be accurate. And then finally, Mr. Brody Lee. And looking at it, there was a lot of love put into this action figure. There's also a Chase Brody and a Rare Anna, both with different gear. I don't think this has popped up for pre-order yet as I'm recording this, but I'm sure that'll happen soon. And then after that, Let's get the rest of the Dark Order. Gotta finish the team. You hear what I'm saying, Jazzwares? Let's cap it off with the monthly Metacom Mofex offerings, which is essentially Boy Scouts in their respective universes. For DC, the Snyder Cut Justice League Black Costume Superman. Now I'm gonna admit, at first glance when I saw this, my mind rushed back to the Batman v Superman Superman that nearly put me off Mofex forever. Between that and the C-3PO, I hated Metacom. I was like, I will never buy an action figure again from this company. That was then. This is now. Metacom has stepped up since then in the QC department and they make much better action figures. I know there are still problems here and there, but not like those first figures. Unless I'm mistaken, this is the sculpt from that Donna Justice Superman. The articulation is all in the same place, the same details and how prominent they are, the same build, different heads, different hair sculpt, different colors, better skin tones and face detail. But as they showed with Brown Wolverine, they can take reused parts and tweak them to not have issues. So I'm not too worried about this. Surely they won't release that first figure in different colors. Do you know which one I'm after? The Marvel X Factor Cyclops. Although I will admit, my intense passion to have this in my hands has cooled a bit since that first showing at a con a few months back, but that has to do with these new promotional pictures too. And when it was originally revealed, it had a separate cowl piece down around the neck, and my hope was that it came up to cover the whole head. That's not the case. Apparently this costume is from later in Scott's X Factor run. And I know there were a few instances of this costume not having glove and boot cuffs, but it wasn't many. And I would have liked to have seen that on this figure. Saying all that, I still like it, 
The design is excruciatingly simple, but one of the harder ones to put on a super articulated action figure without it looking wonky, and I feel like they did an amazing job with that. The blues are pretty, the whites are nicely shaded, the proportions are appropriately heroic, the updated hair sculpts add a little dynamic flare on top, and the effects, while rehashed, are just icing on the cake. It does look like Metacom adjusted the tabs to be bigger, so they plug deeper into the eye sockets to be more secure, I guess, so that's nifty. I think the base sculpt is mostly reuse from the Jim Lee Cyclops we got last year, with the new costume elements sculpted in, like the Wolverine we looked at this week. But without that belt, oh, it looks so much better. If you remember back to that first Cyclops, the belt rode high, and it just kinda made it look stubby here, long-legged. This is much better. Do I wish there was a cowled head? Yes, very much so. But I'm okay with this too because it's a different costume than any of the figures I have on the shelf at the moment. Plus it looks good. Looks good. $80 a piece, hopefully hits our mitts sometime next October. And that's it for this week. No, it's not. I've gotten notifications that I've missed some stuff. We'll come back around next week to talk about the amazing Yamaguchi Superman and a couple of other things on Monday Fush Live, the next weekly wherever I'll see you next. If you're wanting to see any of these pictures up close without me all, well, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I'll be posting all of that, plus links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh Front page Saturday at noon. And now that we're finished, and I'm kind of thinking about everything we just talked about, it, was it everything? All of it was reuse and repaints and updates to figures we already knew about. So that's how they've put out new news without actually having new news. Anyway, be safe over the holidays. Be careful. Have fun. That's the biggie. Holiday your holiday to the full extent that the holiday will allow you to holiday. That, that's what I'm leaving you with. But if you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, Always catch you on the foosh. I done catch, I done caught you red-handed. Who are you? Two questions. Who are you, and who do you think I am? Well, I'm Santa Gus, and you're the Grinch. Do I look like a Grinch? If nothing else, I'd say I was the Easter Bunny. You're both about to end up, be you're both about to end up ghosts of Christmas past.